Uh, I'd like to welcome the next two speakers. It's Amrita and Rashi. They have a combined experience for more than 10 years in IT security. Um, and they're going to talk about invisibility and how to handle that. I'd like to give a warm welcome to Rashi and Amrita. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming for the talk today. I'm Amrita. Uh, I work as a test analyst. Uh, I'm being paid for testing into software, or rather, breaking into softwares. Uh, but here, we are not uh, for, came for breaking into anything. We are here to secure softwares. So uh, I have overall uh, seven to eight years of experience in this. And uh, with me is my uh, co-researcher, an old friend of mine, Rishikesh, uh, who is also a security analyst. And uh, he is into this field since uh, last four to five years. And uh, uh, yes, this is all about us. And the topic that uh, we'll be discussing here is like uh, .11 veil, covert and camouflage, invisible Wi-Fi revealed. Uh, so whenever we see and uh, open Wi-Fi, uh, in the airport, maybe in the uh, coffee lounge, or maybe in uh, McDonald's, what is our uh, reaction? Yay, I got free Wi-Fi. So uh, that was my reaction till yesterday. Uh, but then today morning, when I woke up as a, as a habit, I reached out to my phone. Uh, you can say a phone addict. I uh, went on to checking my emails, my WhatsApp messages, my uh, other accounts. So. Uh, the thing that uh, caught my attention was in my WhatsApp account, there were uh, uh, two messages or uh, say messages from uh, two accounts. Uh, have, uh, I have received few messages in that account, but uh, the messages were received when I was sleeping. So uh, I haven't actually read that, but the status shown was read for that messages. So that caught my attention. I was a uh, little confused because uh, I was the only one in the room. So how is it possible that, uh, how that status is read? So uh, I, I have digged deep into that. So I came to a conclusion like uh, there are two possibilities that this can be done. Like uh, one is like uh, hacking into my DSM connectivity. Uh, Another thing might be uh, hacking into my Wi-Fi connectivity. All we know is like for hacking into GSM connectivities, we need a uh, few uh, devices, few privileged devices that we are not allowed to carry everywhere. Uh, so that was a less possibility. And uh, by selection, by elimination uh, process, I came to an option, which was the only option actually that uh, my Wi-Fi connectivity is compromised. So uh, then I dig more deeper into that. Like I tried to find out uh, that to which access point my device is speaking to, uh, thanks to uh, aircraft engine. Uh, so I found that uh, to which MAC address my device is speaking has no SSID, actually. Uh, so that created more suspicion. I tried to find out. Uh, in that periphery, which other devices are speaking to that MAC address. So uh, I found that the other devices that are speaking to that MAC address, uh, I mean, it has same MAC address, but OK, now this is working good. Uh, so uh, that MAC address has SSID. Uh, so that leads to a conclusion that, uh, or uh, maybe a more confusion that uh, there was a MAC address, same MAC address. There was no SSID to my device. There was an SSID uh, for uh, the MAC address that other devices are approaching. So uh, I have been attacked? Yes. So that was my conclusion. And uh, this is the current state of Wi-Fi, open Wi-Fi nowadays. Uh, so we, we are here to propose an approach propose few approaches uh, that would reveal the uh, covert communication that I actually uh, experienced today. So 
let's let's get into some technical details of this. So uh, our today's agenda is uh, introduction, some details that I have already given, covert communication, the approaches that uh, uh, we are presenting, LT euphoria. Uh, in this approach, we are actually doing some data trafficking uh, into some frames uh, where we are actually uh, sending on to some datas which are uh, uh, where we are where we do not actually expect that uh, data will be sitting as we all know data is sitting in the payloads uh, but there are other ways from where we can send data uh, the next approach will be the patch peloton approach will be uh, using uh, driver patching here uh, there are many things that we have learned during this uh, experience uh, and during this excursion, I would say. And uh, uh, we are still learning and uh, we will be still uh, uh, working on some potential approaches. There are a few other approaches as well, but uh, they are not yet uh, uh, qualified to be presented. And there are conclusions and acknowledgements that uh, will go through. So this is all cluttered, right? So uh, I mean, people here, they, this might be like Latin, Greek, or I mean, uh, you might not be able to stand this. Or I mean, this was our uh, phase as well, a couple of years back uh, when uh, we started this excursion. And uh, but later on, we got some clues we got things sorted out, uh, things were falling in place, and uh, then we were able to say, yes, we, we got the way out. So now we are like sorted. So slide itself says that. So uh, what we say is yes, don't trust payloads, but trust because. Uh, so we'll be uh, doing the data trafficking using uh, some of the frames in beacons. So, uh, Yes, we'll be, we'll be discussing deep into that. Uh, the story behind is, uh, the story behind all of this is like, uh, there are a few un untold pieces uh, in the book, um, that is IEEE 802.11, uh, which is a good book, great book. It's a, like a 6,000 pages book. Uh, we might have uh, read it, so, uh, but they, they have, uh, they haven't disclosed everything in that. They have just suggested a very uh, legitimate way to uh, legitimate to use their uh, standards, and uh, in a very uh, what I would say, the, in a very quality manner. But wittingly or unwittingly, they have prevented uh, disclosing few things. Uh, they have uh, prevented disclosing few fields like uh, uh, parameters fields so that that can be uh, otherwise used for uh, data trafficking and we yes, are so is the holy dot eleven wireless a two two dot eleven so the character of these stories are less access points access points are uh, uh, used as a trans receiver and uh, uh, they can be connected to uh, multiple hosts for uh, sending out the data and for receiving the data. And uh, host, uh, host can be, uh, host can connect to the access point, can talk to access point, and uh, from there uh, talk to the uh, internet, and then by that uh, talk to the world. So we need to go deeper, this is not uh, sufficient, I know. So let's see. Uh, back to some of the basics. Uh, we'll do some introduction and prologue here. So, dot eleven, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, open Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi's are very famous, as I said. I were, my reaction was like, yay, when I found uh, open Wi-Fi. But then again, open Wi-Fi's are more prone to attacks, more vulnerable, and uh, yes, they are like more buggy nowadays. So. Uh, do we need to? Do we need a proof to call bug a bug? Maybe, may not be. Let's see. Uh, so uh, there is a hole in the network perimeter. 
open wireless networks uh, wep wep uh, i mean uh, this is uh, cracked since uh, 2002 and uh, right now we need a couple of minutes to just uh, broke into this uh, and now most of the industries don't use this so uh, this is like a past pad configs uh, configurations like uh, admin 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 password 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 so uh, this lead to a more vulnerable uh, networks loose link in client security uh, offensive rogue access points eavesdropping in socially dense areas and uh, connectivity mess ups uh, so yes they, these are also more vulnerable things there are many victims uh, adding to my device these are a uh, few more victims like mobile phones cameras printers gaming consoles laptops desktops or uh, through whichever medium we can connect to internet and send the data and uh, li like okay uh, so ra right now in uh, today like ICS uh, that is also uh, more prone to be a victim all in all many victims awaiting exploitation uh, there are few dot 11 modes uh, that can be used uh, first mode is like managed managed mode is uh, where your uh, interface card acts as a station uh, ad hoc ad hoc is also an uh, uh, form of managed mode where uh, station can be used ad hocly and uh, that that is why it's called as ad hoc station master mode uh, there are few uh, revelations in this case that will come come back to this point later on this mode monitor mode uh, it shows everything seen by the radio and yes so uh, this is me and uh, for more details i will hand over the communication to rishikesh he'll guide you through thank you amrita well, yes uh, covert communication uh, these set of characters are pretty juicy uh, information that everybody would love to see in their uh, career of information security i would say so let's dig deep into that so by book, what actually code communication is? In computer security, a code channel is a type of computer security attack that creates a capability to transfer information objects between processes that are not supposed to be allowed to communicate by the computer security policy. Making it more simple, there are always some ways to smuggle data onto any network channel, we can say. As of now, our case study basically deals with uh, channels which are pertaining to wireless. So uh, there have always been ways to smuggle data using various layers in ISOSI model. In this particular talk, we'll be dealing more with uh, data link layer. Yeah, I mean, if we consider application layer, there are again different types of breaches we can implement in order to uh, reach, uh, or, rather, or rather in order to achieve a coordinates as far as communication is concerned. So we have been focusing on some of the aspects in data link layer and that too specifically on beacons and probes. So let's learn why specifically beacons and probes. Before that, allow me giving me some introdu introducery understanding on dot uh, 11 frames, like wireless frames and the types. So there are basically management frames, control frames and data frames. So management frames, I have just enlisted a few of them here, like association request, and response, reassociation request and response, probe request and response, beacon frames, so on and so forth. There are actually plethora of such frames here, but as of now, our interest, or rather the thing that we tried experimented was upon probe request and response and beacons. Going further, yeah, uh, this is just a formality as we have mentioned, like management control and data frame, I just am enumerating them here. So it is like control frames, RTS stands for request to send, CTS stands for clear to send, ACK, PS poll, so on and so forth. In case of data, it is AMSDU, variant, different variants of MPDU. As of now, this is not of our concern. So let's go to the first approach that we have proposed, 
to achieve uh, or rather to smuggle data over a legitimate wireless channel. So the name of that approach we have put here it as ELT euphoria. ELT is actually we have uh, borrowed this term from uh, scapy terminology where we use a particular field uh, or rather particular construct called dot 11 uh, ELT. So that actually infers to information element. So ELT is nothing but information element part of wireless frames. Beacon frame is essential element in the wireless networks, yes. Beacon frame populates here with a rate of around 1 frame per 100 milliseconds. So around per minute we receive 600 uh, beacon frames. So as we see the number it is abundantly available into local radio periphery. So they are broadcast, yeah that is advantageous for us. And they do not require any authentication or association with access point to listen to them. So some very basic structure of beacon frame we see here. There are various parameters we can see out of that as of now we will be uh, focusing more on to this parameter called TIM stands for traffic indication map. We will come to that soon. So some small animation I know the graphics are pretty blurred. I have uh, borrowed it from uh, Wikipedia. So this actually tells like how access point is advertised in beacon frame. So when, when so ever a beacon frame is injected into the local periphery what it does it actually is a broadcast. So for receiver address it is going to be all F fields and there would be an SSID which would be embedded into uh, beacon frame. So that is all the information that all of us know about beacon frame right. But there are certain parameters as well which can be used in order to traffic data. So there is a lot of information stuffed inside wireless frames in our context beacon frame or probe request and response. Yeah before we go further let me tell you what what is a probe request and response. Suppose today here we are sitting and there is an there is a network called Brucon, a wireless network with an SSID Brucon. So here we have connected to that device. So in some cache of our phone or maybe of our laptop, this particular SSID is saved. So tomorrow if I go to maybe another hotel, let's call it as a Novotel, hotel and there I just start my device or rather I enable my wireless uh, feature of device, the initial set of injections that my uh, wireless set of device will do is like it will send certain frames just to see like in past I was connected to Brucon as a network uh, network called Brucon. So is that network available into this present local radio periphery? To check that it will inject certain frames. So the injection these injected frames are nothing but probe requests and if these requests receive certain legitimate response then that is called as a probe response. The difference between beacon frame and probe request response frame as far as uh, uh, format is concerned is only couple of fields are changed or rather the numbers are changed. In case of beacon frame the subtype is 0x08 in case of probe request it is 0x04. So that is only the difference. So yes <coughs> I think that is elaborate about uh, probe request and response. So how to harness the true power of these frames and in the fields which have better lens in order to ship data. So going further like let us come to the point what exactly information elements have to do with our talk. Information elements are certain piece of, certain piece of information as far as hardware, some power rating some different properties of that particular wireless network network interface card is concerned into that uh, context. So inter uh, interesting elements like this particular uh, information element has has got 255 different 256 different variants according to the IEEE 802.11 draft that has been released in eight, uh, 2012 there are 256 possibilities of information element. Out of them as of now there are around 121 information elements are in practice. Out of them we have picked couple of them for our uh, experimentation. So 
Some of the interesting elements we have listed here as SSID stands for service set identifier. Then DS set kind of again some parameters we use and TIM stands for traffic indication map. Rates again different parameter in case of uh, uh, information element. ES rates, TPC requests and response recently we found some juicy about this as well and country yes. Again this particular element has got some capability to ship data over uh, legitimate channel. So why particularly beacon or probe frames? As I have said earlier these frames they do not require authentication or association to air themselves. Being broadcast so no need to zero down on host selection like we need not pinpoint to a particular host in order to run an attack had it been a multicast or a unicast that would have been a test case we have to take in consideration. So it's like we just bursting out it's like fire at will. Presence of these frames in multitude in local wireless periphery is a common phenomenon hence escapes suspicious eyes initially. What I mean to say here is like there would be some filtering devices there would be some monitoring devices. So instead of 600 there might be some 6000 beacon frames present per second. But no suspicious activity would be logged in case of filtering devices or uh, in case of your UDMs for that matter. Again the multitude will always facilitate the large chunk of data to ship, yes. Outbreak of malware, yes always a possibility. Some fields allows pushing more than 250 bytes of data in a single frame. So now many of you might be working for some threat intel company or maybe or for some exploitation uh, maybe in, in an exploitation business. So they know very well importance of having 250 bytes in a single chunk what all can be done using that. So they are pretty much enough to ship a malicious payload. So yes I have here uh, just tried to mention what field we will be taking in consideration that is TIM traffic indication map. So why particularly TIM? If we break down TIM into pieces again we will see that there is a particular field called partial virtual bitmap. This is the field which allows you ship data between 1 to 251 bytes which otherwise is used <coughs> to ship certain buffer data when, when your network interface card is in a sleep mode. So TIM allows shipping data of around 250 bytes in a partial <coughs> virtual bitmap field. Essentially it was easy to fabricate the frame in SCAPI with this information element. So I, I just have uh, prepared one probe request. Why probe request? It was basically because while, while actually crafting a beacon frame in a SCAPI, that frame was getting prepared on my machine was getting interpreted in my kernel but it was not escaping my machine. Somehow I was unable to broadcast that particular beacon. So is the reason I have taken in account probe request and experimented same thing. If we see here this partial virtual bitmap shows a huge string right which otherwise is not crafted automa automatically using your drivers or maybe using your opting systems. And if we see the translation of that particular string, here we can see it is some meaningful text. So I have actually tried write some script for this which was very well working for uh, uh, with my earlier box this is a new box I am unable to work that out but still I will share that thing with you. I am sorry. So this is the raw SCAPI script I tried right. So I have actually imported everything from SCAPI in order to run it in a python environment. I put some source MAC address that is my uh, a network interface cards MAC address, the destination MAC address, yeah I kept it purposely uh, broadcast because it is a probe request. So it has to be reached every network interface card or every intelligent uh, wireless network device present into the local radio periphery. Then SSID, I have, I have crafted certain 
parameters here for SSID that is log 11 ELT then ID is SSID and information this is nothing but the name of SSID I put as if all A is there. So for traffic indication map <coughs> I have again prepared another construct and that is like uh, very well available with our SKP. So here we, we have put an ID as a TIM that is nothing but the name of information element. Then info I have just put it as a brucon, brucon, brucon all the way. And then I have just layered these particular uh, constructs over each other in order to build a packet or a frame. So if you see here, this is the frame I tried build. And when I tried run this as of now it was giving me some encoding error. It was just 5 minutes back I have come across that error so I could not rectify it but earlier with some certain tweaks maybe if we spend an hour or so we can make it run properly in order to ship this particular data. So as of now I am using certain bytes of 250 bytes. Now what if I put actually a raw shell code here and send it over well there would be requiring some uh, some work around for that like you know how this particular uh, raw shell code will be interpreted by uh, victim like where ag where actually it will be landing or maybe we need to find particular vulnerability in a in a wireless driver for that matter or maybe some kernel interpreter or maybe kernel object for that matter where this can run and can produce some good output or maybe a shell. So this is what we have been trying to achieve but this thing is workable we have we have made it work so is the reason we can see this screen capture. So the issues with this approach yeah so if somebody is doing a deep packet inspection using firewalls then yeah there will be a suspicious alarm generated for this because we are shipping a lot of data into some element which otherwise is not supposed to send such a huge chunk of data. Reordering the data at receiver end could be an issue should sequencing is not taken care of before showing in the data. As I have told like yes 250 bytes we can send very well but if my data size is beyond 250 bytes then yes there are certain issues we, we still are working on how to sequence that data. There are certain parameters like timing and ID parameters which can help us doing that. But so far the output is unstable, I am receiving some garbles in some cases and in some cases we are receiving proper output. So as that is not tested perfectly on all grounds I have not produced the output here. No retrieval of lo lost frames so far, yeah. So as, as we are still struggling with this whole sequencing issue, we could not actually work upon uh, retrieval of lost frames as well. And as I have told already uh, like SKP doesn't support beacon injection swiftly. Yeah that is still an issue. For that the workaround is like we are supposed to write a simple C program in order to generate that particular beacon frame and wrap that over into Python environment and send it over. So maybe C types will help but me being not very uh, core programmer I still am struggling with this. Yes, so having considered these particular issues or drawbacks of this particular approach, we have we have worked around this and found something else. So my new divergent to LTOphoria where we have considered some different type of frames. Like in case of uh, control frames, we have been talking about uh, uh, clear to send and request to send. These frames are actually uh, succeeded by a frame called ACK frame. So now the thing here is like when so we uh, consider an acknowledgement a host uh, oh yeah before we go further this this type of attack is going to be majoritily either unicast or multicast just because acknowledgement is supposed to be sent for a particular communication which has already been initiated so this will not actually help in case of uh, broadcasting attacks we can say. So act frames or response frames are of significance to reply to certain communication initiated by the remote host earlier. So 
we are in some comfort zone. We know like, yes, there is some communication initiated. There is already some information exchange happened. So now can we write certain data over these ACK frames or response frames? So the trust is already in place between two hosts. The responses or acknowledgments sent by unsolicited user will receive little low priority of inspection as it, has, as it has assumed that such responses are bound to come from a legit source on peripheral devices. Adding this approach with the Elta Euphoria will give solution to the sequencing issue. Why? It is just because already there is some set of activity done. So to have this particular activity completed, there is some sequencing mechanism already in place. So we need not re invent the wheel or re rewrite that whole logic in order to generate that sequencing mechanism here. The response traffic is always made more intelligent as they are capable of, as they are capable of assigning sequence, discipline, and discipline the traffic at receiver end, as I have just explained you. The parameters which could come handy are frame control, frame control sequence, more data, more fragments, sequence numbers, BSS ID, ESS ID, and essentially source address. So what actually we did into this is like, we have encoded the data and ship it over, shipped it over an ACK uh, response, we can say. Before doing that, how did we encode the data? We have used certain logic, and that logic we have embedded and pre-shared with the user in the parameter uh, called ID. <coughs> Sorry, we have used the ID parameter to encode the thing, and then we have shipped this thing over. This secret was already pre-shared with uh, with other party. And then we have run this partial stealth mode on legit acknowledgement. This may actually lead to some ad hoc network scenario where we are actually tweaking into protocol stack, we are changing certain things. So this may not always abide by the rule sets which are uh, produced into IEEE 802.11 standards. There might be some diversion, and yes, we did that diversion as well. So resulting in more autonomy and more control over the data, yes, that is possible just because we are altering almost everything that is needful to make our uh, conduit or rather covert conduit uh, legitimate. So the issues, yes, we still will be facing issues from anomaly detection uh, based uh, firewalls, you can say. The loss frames are still an issue, yeah. In, in, in case of sequences, uh, sequencing, we can achieve certain success here, but as far as lost frames are concerned, there is actually no clue that there is some frame which has been sent from host A to host B. So how to, how to make it resend? So host B have no mechanism to gather this intelligence, hence host B cannot actually tell host A, ki, yeah, I'm triggering this alert because I did not receive this frame. So this thing is still missing. So these were two approaches. Uh, we, are, we, we, are, we are still uh, working upon them. There are certain more fields we have been considering and yeah, outputs are a little varying, so is the thing. So the third approach is a little different. Here we are not uh, crafting a packet of frame, in fact, what we are trying to, yeah, we are doing that, but that is in a later stage. Initially, what we're trying to do here is, we are trying to patch the network drivers. So what we found here is like, the driver patching is one of the most efficient way of achieving invisibility in the air. This approach fairly mitigates the issues we have confronted in the previous approaches. Having this said, it is truly covert conduit setup for securing the communication over the air. Before we proceed further, uh, this patch peloton approach is actually inspired by the work of uh, Dr. Lauren Booty. He is a researcher in 2006, Black Hat DC. He have actually produced research on uh, same covert channel and covert communication. He have used driver patching itself, but the parameters he have used for driver patching were different. And the pa parameters that we are using for driver patching here are different. So truly speaking, uh, he deserves the credit. So I just having, I just am having his mention in this talk because I, I, he's my inspiration basically in this. So the test case, we have, we have devised a uh, certain test case for this. So what we have done, we have prepared two hosts. So one host is having, uh, rather these two hosts having 
patched drivers. We have used Unix machines as of now because uh, these things were more uh, swifter on Unix machines having known the kernel code and things like that. Windows machines also we have used just in order to check whether whatever the cohort traffic that we are trying to do using these patched drivers, whether that is detectable on some unpatched machines as well or what. So scanning and stumbling purpose as we've seen. So what we've done is like we have raised an access point on one Linux machine by turning on, uh, tuning into master mode with having the patch drivers enabled on it. The machines with unpatched drivers will not be able to see the engineered traffic. The machines with patched drivers will be able to communicate with their devices having some patched protocol stack, having same protocol stack. So what were the deductions? Before we go further into uh, further detail into this, what we actually tried to patch here was like for, for a legitimate uh, wireless frame, let's say version field, we consider it as a zero always. Like analogously in case of IP packet, if we say like it's an IP packet, there are two versions, I mean two variants of version field, we consider it is either four or six. Parallelly, uh, same time, if we consider a wireless frame, version field into the wireless frame so far is kept zero. Here in this patch, what we've tried to do is like we have changed that zero to 10. Hence, whatever the data that we have shipped, having our frame crafted with version field as 10 will otherwise uh, will be dropped by those all hosts which are not actually having a patched driver. But in case of a patch driver, this particular frame will be interpreted by the kernel and will be fed further to the appropriate process. So the deductions from this approach are engineered beacon frames from access points with patched protocol stack not read by the devices having unpatched protocol stack. Neither, <coughs> neither of probes injected by devices with patched protocol stacks were read by the devices with unpatched version of protocol stacks. Sniffers gave little variation in the dump of traffic. Yeah, we have received sometimes some garbled text. Sometimes we have experienced a lot of uh, driver, <coughs> we, we have experienced a lot of crash as well. We are still facing that thing. Actually, uh, as right now we are, uh, we are running majority of Linux uh, machines onto kernel 4.x, so this experimentation was basically done on kernel 2.6 onto my desktop box. But post that, that whole implementation is failing somehow. So I could not produce the output here. <coughs> but yeah, this thing is pretty much workable and we've tested it on some uh, lab environment we can say. So in some cases, devices with unpatched protocol stack were not able to sniff engineered traffic at all. And some dumps gave a garbled traffic. So yeah, so the results were mixed. So what was the advantage here? What, what are the set of advantages rather? In in-house solution for mitigating majority of attacks on wireless infrastructure. Partial occurrence of event horizon in wireless networks is very much achievable using this approach. Yeah, because see, we are sending certain data which is only interpretable by certain kernels or rather interpretable by certain drivers which are patched. So, Suppose I say like I'm sending data from A to B and B to C, and if C is trying to trace back <coughs> from where this data is originated, this whole trace is ending at B. Because post B, whatever traffic that device is trying to do is not interpretable at all. So it will always receive certain ICMP <coughs> responses from uh, host B back to host C. So yeah, so that is one of the advantage we can say. This actually, uh, if we successfully build a patch, this doesn't actually require a lot of edit. We just need to run that patch onto our driver and things will move smooth. So requires no great deal of changes in operating environments other than patched drivers. Low cost, low effort solution, we would say. Yes, these things are so far working good on Linux boxes, not onto Windows. We are yet to test these things on Windows boxes. <coughs> so what, what we, what we have earned or learned in learning out of this is like, there are many issues with SKP. Like uh, we were big time relying upon SKP for injection purpose, for, <coughs> for various packet graphing purpose. 
But it's been found like while, while uh, building frames in layer two, that is dead link layer, SKP gives many errors. <coughs> It certain, uh, it, it, at, at certain places, it, it, it gives certain uh, outputs which are like totally absurd and that will actually land you in a lot of confusion. Building patches takes a lot of input from various sources. Yeah, in case of let us four point X kernels, even it uh, inherits certain, uh, certain <coughs> resources from uh, operating system as well. So it's not it's not mere a driver we're supposed to patch. We need to take care of certain uh, resources from operating system as well. So that is actually preventing us from uh, compiling this whole thing properly into our 4.x, <coughs> you can say. Yeah, so that was all so far. So potential approaches, as, as I've told, like there are certain uh, different requests and responses, certain fields into information <coughs> elements we have come across, which are again capable of shipping some data. So recently we have identified that <coughs> this TPC request and response are, are capable of shipping data more than 200 uh, bytes again. We have tested TCP, uh, TPC re responses, but we could not somehow test TC TPC requests properly. Yesterday only, I was able to uh, find that country, the, the name of this particular uh, uh, information element ID is country. This again is capable of shipping 256 byte of data. So this can again be exploited in a proper way in order to uh, send or rather smuggle the data over legit channels. So far, as I've told earlier as well, like we have explored only version field in the driver patching. There are many more fields. Yeah, there was a question like why specifically version field we have picked up? It was just because that was one of the constant field we have used <coughs> into uh, wireless frame. But apart from that, there are many other fields as well. Like there are certain fields which are lying around into uh, power management, certain things into uh, uh, frame control sequence that is FCS. So these fields also will actually help us uh, coming up with some different type of co uh, covert channel. Yes, PS pole frame is also an interesting carrier, yet we could not work uh, the traffic so far. Why PS, frame, PS pole frame? Because <coughs> when so we say like we are polling particular device, what we're trying to do is like we, we are actually inheriting certain buffered data and then shipping it over again. So what if, Instead, I'm waiting for that device to wake up and send the data over as my poll data. I can very well alter, alter that data to whatever my desired input is and can ship it over. So that was the motive behind doing this PS poll framework. So yeah, so conclusion. So wireless networks have a different way of securing as well by mean of running covert channel. The approaches we have proposed are still in development so far, which with the help of minute automation can lead to nicer outcomes. As I've told in case of uh, LT euphoria, like what if in that particular traffic indication map, I, I put certain data and make it readable by my kernel. So then I'm, I'm capable of actually running kind of a bot onto various devices and then just it's a matter of that agent handler mechanism or an algorithm in order to have them all operated in a proper way. Yes, the approaches we have proposed are still in development. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm repeating this. Acknowledgements. Uh, I have been following closely the literature uh, given by Vivek Ramachandran. He has actually uh, set up a course called Wireless Security Mega Primer. So basic understanding I have gained from his Mega Primer as far as this frames and packets are concerned. Josh Wright for his blog will hack for Sushi, helping a lot regarding scapy scripts. And yes, Brucon 2015 for hosting such a nice uh, event and allowing me to present, or rather allowing us to present over here. Uh, Thank you very much for your uh, 
patience and listening to my talk. If you have any question, I'll be glad to answer them.